uh, Bright City Church, our live stream. <laughs> and uh, just want to say hello. Hello to Rebecca and Rebecca. Rebecca, <laughs> Rebecca King, who's joining us soon to um, to share a word. And uh, Rebecca Nazareth, who's uh, joined us to watch Rebecca, I believe. <laughs> Hi, Bethany. Hi, Bethany and, and Daisy. I hope Daisy's tuned in and taking notes this morning. Little Daisy. It's just lovely seeing everyone waking up this morning with us, putting your comments in. And I don't know, there's an excitement in the air, isn't there? Um, God is up to something good and we can feel the excitement in us as we all come together. And God has been speaking and God is moving. And um, it's just so great. You know, the sun is shining. There's an expectation in the air. Yes. I don't know. That's what I'm feeling this morning. Absolutely. I don't know about everybody else. Come on. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm getting it from morning, Josephine. Morning, Bill and Margaret. Morning, Jade. Morning, Sarah. And uh, we've got morning to Jason. Morning, Jade and Dee. Morning, Stephanie, Ben. Morning, Pastor Fani. Morning, Angela, Justin, Tracy, Tad, Vicky. <laughs> Great to be all together. It's, and those it's... that aren't able to type in anything and are watching by the website, morning, Ike and the family. Good morning, Grace and Morning, Ezekiel. Grace. <laughs> morning, morning, Addy. Morning, Pastor Mary. Great to be together. So, and Rick and Ali, morning, Rick and Ali. morning yes. wave. We're up to 45 and counting, 45 <laughs> unique devices yes. tuned in so far. All uh, morning, Louisa. Out of their beds. Morning, Rachel. <laughs> Good morning. And so, yes, we're live streaming. And, and you know, I was sharing that word about broadcasting, casting out the nets in this time. And then I suddenly had the thought as well <laughs> live streams, you know, living streams. Amen. There are streams of living water yeah. going out, live streaming <laughs> around the globe right now more so than ever before from the churches bringing the living word bringing hope and in jesus name we yes. lord we thank you for this Amen. time when the live streams when the streams of living yes. water of Come hope on. of the gospel yeah. of jesus christ are going into all the world yes. like never before and we pray father yes, that there would be a great harvest a great yes, awakening a great opening of eyes to see yeah. the hope of all the world jesus christ Christ. Wonderful. Yes. Good can morning, I, can Carol. I just share my little joke that I shared? Well, it wasn't a joke. It was a really funny thing that happened to me this morning. And I shared it with you that I was reading in the book of Acts and I didn't have my glasses on. And um, I was reading Acts 2 and one of the titles jumped out at me and I thought I read a virtual church grows. And I thought a virtual church grows. In the Bible. And then I put my glasses on and I realised it did actually say a vital church grows. But hey, and then I felt, but that's good. A virtual church grows. I read, I misread it, but I felt in my spirit that is what is happening. The Absolutely. virtual church is growing. The virtual church is growing. Yes, a word from God. And um, yes, Jason, <laughs> totally agree. It's, it's lovely being together like this, isn't it? But isn't it going to be good when we do get together? We're missing being together yeah, uh, personally course. and um, look forward to that. But, you know, I was thinking as well, you know, we're moving into our fifth week of lockdown. And, um, you know, what, again, we've been sharing a lot, haven't we, about what's going on. And I was reminded a, a few years ago, I, I was watching this guy, uh, a real sort of well-known man of God um, at the time. And he was asked the question, you know, what is it that the church needs more than anything else right now? And he said, it's to be still. It's to be still. There's so much noise in our world. There's so much, even the busyness of work patterns these days, the overtime, the work. Then you've got the television, you've got the mobiles, you've got all this sort of noise, 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 noise. And it, if, if God says, be still and know that I am God, there's something about being still and actually getting to know God more. And, and maybe when we're, when we're never still and we refuse to be still, we really can't know God like we should. And um, so I want you to know that yeah. God is doing something in this day yes. where in his love, in his grace and mercy, he's making all the world be still. Yeah and know that he is God. Yes. And if you're tuning in and, and maybe you, um, you haven't yet encountered Jesus as your savior and Lord, you know, this is, there's no accident that you're yeah. tuning in. He's saying, mm. hey, 
be still at this time. This time you can come to know me yeah. as Amen. your living Lord and Saviour. Yeah. And I will be with you yeah. always from this day forth as you put your trust in me. Yeah. And um, yes, be still. And even, dear friends, as a church, you know, let's take this time of of really getting to know God more than we've ever known him before. Yeah. That's a right. time when we can be still. Yeah, and I, I love the scripture in Isaiah, and it's sort of like, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. And this is the time we're in, you know, and I was reminded today of the spirit of Joshua and Caleb. Now, they had a different kind of spirit that took them from the old into the new. And I really believe that this is a season where God is working on us as his people, getting us ready for the new thing, for that shift. And there is such a shift happening right now. And we can all feel it in our spirit. Yeah. And we've been saying it, we're never going to be the same again when we come out of this. And, right. and as we're in that secret place, as we're being still with the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, let's hear the word of the Lord. And um, because we, we don't want to be left in the old. We want to move into the new. We want that different kind of spirit. And there are three things that I've been asking myself. And I've said this to Ian, you know, what are you saying to me, God? What are you saying to the church? What are you saying to the nations? And those are those three things. What are you saying to me What in this time? Yeah. About me personally, what have I got to let go of? What have I got to rise up to? Um, and, and, and changing my character and shaping me and getting me out of my comfort zone. Mm. And there's what am I doing with the church? What's my position? What's God saying about the church? And what's he saying to you about your position in the body of Christ right now? And being open to all that God is doing. Mm. It's exciting times. It is. Thanks. That's brilliant. And um, yeah, we've been uh, sharing, you know, the power of our testimony and we've heard um, some wonderful testimonies already so far. Yeah. We heard from Ben. That was brilliant. Ben, he came on live. We heard from Angela Davis. Was that last week when Angie yeah. recorded hers? That was fantastic. I've got another one I'm going to share with you in a, in a, in a moment. I just um, got this verse that uh, I thought we could have a verse for the week. And here's, um, here's a verse that uh, I want to just highlight. Yet to all who did receive him, Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Mm -hmm. Yet to all who did receive him, to all, you can receive him. You can believe in his name today right now and you will become a child of God and so many of us uh, have experienced that um, that becoming and uh, I want to just share this uh, testimony it comes from the Alpha course that we um, we enjoyed very recently as a church enjoy this testimony of someone who um, did receive Jesus as their saviour I got in with the wrong crowd and I started to um, pinch cars, burgle houses, uh, become known, me and my friends become known as very high profile thieves really. I used to carry big knives, uh, the, the big knives to the smaller knives down my waist and I was the kind of person where if you pulled a knife out I would use it. I ended up stabbing someone in the head, I ended up um, Stabbing someone just missing his heart and going through the top of his shoulder, uh, the, the top of his chest and his shoulder way. He dropped to the floor and so I was on the run for two attempted murders. And then I was just, when I went to prison, I had such a hatred for the system and I couldn't handle being told what to do, couldn't handle prison officers mucking me about. When I went out on association, I got the prison officer and I, uh, I stabbed him. And then this led to me going into maximum security prisons, being put on CSC where they feed you through a hatch in the door. There's no physical contact, so they have to have ride shields and ride gear on. Um, and that was my life for a long, long time, basically. And I, I just was going from prison to prison, prison to prison. But then I ended up going to Long Larton in Worcestershire. And when I was in there, I ended up going in an Alpha course. Never heard of an Alpha course, didn't know anything. And I just remember walking in because they'd sent me down. I sat down on a chair. And I thought, oh no, it's a Christian thing. And we'd just go there every week and I would argue. And the pastor, um, I remember he come to me. He said, right, I'm gonna say a few scriptures first. 
before we pray. And one of them was, no one's righteous, not one. We all fall short of the glory of God. And then he said the verses about Jesus and explained a bit why he died on the cross for sinners and stuff. And then he said, pray. So I started praying and I said, uh, God, I said, God, if you're real, come into my life because I hate who I am. And nothing happened. But then, as I was talking to the pastor, I started to feel this energy feeling in my stomach. And it started to raise up and raise up and raise up and raise up. And I just broke out into uncontrollable um, tears. And I just sobbed. <clears throat> and I just... Right there. Because that was a change of my whole life. I knew God was real. Um, and no one will change that now. And then I remember <laughs> running on the wing. People clearly knew that I would become a Christian. So I actually helped them on another two Alpha courses. And then I, I, um, I got released. I've been in a prison where I... Because you would have thought that the prison where I stopped the prison officers would have been the last prison to have me. But they were the first. That's how God works. The best thing for me is going in prisons and helping the lads in prison and, and trying to tell them about God. I've got um, four kids and then my life. Um, and what upsets me is because now I know um, that back then, if I had the kids, uh, they wouldn't have had a good upbringing. And now they sit on the night and have Bible studies with their dad. Um, <clears throat> have Bible study with a dad, have a life, the beautiful, um, and my life, and this is probably is my wife and my kids are the best gift, that, apart from the grace God's given me, is the best gift I've ever, he'll ever give me. Didn't expect to cry like that. I've recovered now. Lord, we thank you for the awesome gift of eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him, whoever receives him and accepts him as their Lord and Savior will know you eternally, just like Shane did. And, and I pray if you're watching today, you would make that decision. It's no accident that you're watching today. Choose Jesus. Ask him into your life like Shane did. He said, God, if you're there. I want to believe in you. Come into my life. And that's what happened. God bless you. And it's such a powerful yes. testimony. We're going to continue to worship God by um, Ben and Jay have, um, have, are going to lead us in worship now. So let's uh, let's worship God together. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, what a beautiful name, the name of Jesus. And we just declare that the name of Jesus be exalted today, be exalted you, in Lord. our lives, be exalted in our homes, Thank you, Lord. be exalted over this nation and above the nations. Yes, and Lord. One day, every tongue will confess that yes, Jesus Lord. Christ is Lord and every knee will bow before Hallelujah. the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, we just thank you, Father God, that you're here. We thank you for your presence. Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the privilege and the freedom to be able to worship you and to be able to declare your name over the airwaves. And Lord, I pray in Jesus name that everybody that hears the name of Jesus, that they would encounter him yes, in Lord. a way they've never encountered him before. Thank you, Lord. There is power as we declare the name of Jesus today. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we're looking forward to having Rebecca join us in a moment. Um, if you want to phone in Rebecca, that'd be great. And uh, yeah, Rachel's... just a few things just to remind you, if you want to continue to give, of course, um, we aren't physically can't take up a tithes and offering here <laughs> on online. Um, but you can go to the website and there's a giving page and it gives you various options that you continue to be able to give uh, to Bright City Church. I think there's PayPal uh, is one of them. There's a few others um, options there to be able to give. So we're looking forward to um, that. Okay. And also, if you want to um, receive the email that we uh, Ian sends out, Pastor Ian sends it out every Thursday, I believe. Um, and uh, just uh, message us at, uh, on the uh, Facebook Messenger or you can email us um, to give us your email address um, and we will continue to put you on our list and uh, you'll get a newsletter from Ian. Um, and also just to flag up that we do have a Zoom prayer meeting every Friday. Now, Zoom meetings are closed meetings. That means nobody else joins in. They're not live. They're not broadcast live. Um, and it's just an intimate um, Zoom meeting with um, the church family, of course. And you have to have the password and a code to get into that, which we generally send out um, on Thursday evening via the life groups. Great. Um, so that's on Sunday, uh, Friday morning at seven. We have a closed Zoom meeting if you'd like to join us for that. Lovely. Well, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. You are now <laughs> on the broadcast. <laughs> So uh, yes, here I am. Great. To see you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Rebecca. Morning, Rebecca. Yeah, You're looking I'm lovely talking. as ever. And You've had a busy weekend, I know. Yeah, Amazing. I'm still tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look gorgeous I as ever. Tired, which doesn't say much. Sorry. You look gorgeous as ever. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It's all fakery. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a few filters going on on my phone here. <laughs> exactly. There you go. <laughs> anyway great yeah. rebecca so thanks so much for joining us and um uh -huh. rebecca i'm just going to give you a little introduction rebecca you are the founder and leader of invictus prophetic network you are a recognized prophet <laughs> who ministers around the world wonderful <laughs> you are uh, on the leadership of the british isles council of prophets and amazingly, you are a member of our Bright City Church family. We're so blessed yes. to have you as part of that family. And thanks for coming on and joining us today. So um, with this lockdown life, how is it, you know, affecting your life uh, sort of as, as, as Rebecca King? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, all it's done is make me busier. Yeah. And uh, I think everyone's been finding that. And I've had to, like everyone else, adjust to new rhythm. Yeah. And yeah. I'm still adjusting to new rhythms, however many weeks in it is, um, because it's like you need a new kind of strength every day for whatever is in front of you. Yeah. And then you have to put that into the context of living on Zoom yeah. or yeah. communicating on <laughs> Zoom, which is, you know, something I'm not completely used to. And so, yeah, it's all about finding that rhythm of grace that the Bible talks about, you know, and, and plugging into that and and not trying to to live outside of it like yeah. just sticking in close then yeah yeah that's how it is yeah. for me. brilliant brilliant yeah we can relate to that living yeah, in front of the true. camera <laughs> it's a whole new world yeah, isn't it? Moment, yeah. <laughs> i know so yeah. Re rebecca i mean for those who who don't know you i i know well your dad your father was 
one of the founders, if not the founder, you correct me in a moment, of Mission Aviation Fellowship, Math. And, uh, you know, you grew up in that uh, incredible world. Mm. Uh, you know, tell us a bit about that um, or, or, you know, what your dad did and stuff, for those who don't know. Yeah, he was one of the founders of Math, And, of course, that meant that I got to grow up overseas, which, as far as I'm concerned, is, has been the best way for a child to grow up. We grew up slowly. We grew up with the, the soil, the hot, hot red soil of, of Sudan and East Africa underneath our feet. And it, you know, I think it brought things alive in us spiritually. Um, you know, I have an inheritance from the years that I lived in Africa and, yeah. and uh, it shaped who I am today and, and actually uh, shaped my context. Like, because, because what I learned there spiritually uh, was that we all belong to one big family. I was in an interdenominational kind of setting. And so every church type were in our world. Right. And so I didn't grow up um, keeping cloistered away, you know, from people who were different than us. And I found that that's really helped me as I transition, have transitioned into leadership roles in the prophetic that I need to learn as a prophet to flow with prophets in streams that are completely different than what I'm used to, awesome. because that adds to the world of, of prophecy. It adds to a genuine prophetic voice, and and it just begins to remove judgments from us and preconceptions and all the things that don't usher in the presence of the Lord in the way that he wants to come. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, wow, yeah. yes. Yeah, I don't know if I told you, but I lived um, for a few years in Africa as a tiny little kid, and my brother was born there in Zambia. But uh, did I tell you that oh. before? But, yes, <laughs> the, the red earth. The red earth, amazing. <laughs> you know that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, the soil um, of Africa always speaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we were due to be in uh, Zimbabwe just uh, a week or so ago. Go, but uh, with the lockdown it's it's not happened we'll have to go later so yeah, yeah what you were sharing there that nicely brings into maybe you could say a little bit about you know your faith journey and how you discovered that you had you know a, something of a prophetic gift and you know maybe what okay. you did about that and and yeah that'd sure. be great to hear um i i actually gave my heart to jesus in a little corner of a room on a mission station in the Sudan. I was two years old wow. and there was a gathering of uh, missionaries. And I remember them being all around a big dining room table. And I was, of course, bored with that. And so for whatever reason, I went off and gave my heart to Jesus and came back into the room and announced it to everyone and said, I'm going to be a missionary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that was sort of the start of this long <laughs> A journey in and out of being a Christian and over lots of humps and bumps yeah. and, and kind of thing. But very young, um, I started to show signs that there was something uh, different about me spiritually. And I would respond to different things. Mm. My father and mother both noticed that. And, okay. and my mother noticed that I would know things I shouldn't know. <laughs> and wow. uh, And that actually frightened her because our context at that time was quite... Um, brethren influenced and and you know three hymns stand up sit down and there wasn't a um, a framework for things of the spirit of God yeah. and, but my father used to read the the books of of like Isaiah over me and Jeremiah and all those things and I would respond so I think that even in their lack of understanding God used them to to instill um, and to 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 give a pathway for the things that my little spirit was carrying yeah. that I had no idea about. So so I was born into the prophetic world and it was in my 20s after I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit that God began to give me language and understanding and uh, for the things of the spirit. And I knew I was called as a prophet to the nation, but I had no idea what a prophet was. I thought I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. But I actually had no idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so even that has been a long, long journey. I'm in my mid sixties now, so it's been forty years of formation. Wow. And forty years of getting me to the point where I could be trusted enough to handle the word of the Lord, but not just to handle the word of the Lord, to handle his people yeah. with mm. the wisdom necessary uh to 
speak rightly into lives and speak rightly into churches and speak rightly into the nations of the world. It takes um, just that long journey of character. So you'll hear me speaking often about character because I think it's the, the thing that actually is the most important in a prophet's life. Well, in all in of all our, our lives, lives yeah. <laughs> of, of expertise, if you will, would be in the lives of the prophets. God's called me at this stage in my life to be a prophet to prophet. Wonderful. And, and um, so yeah. I'm, I love to find prophets, to teach them, train them, raise them awesome. up, and to get them to the point where they can live and be who God has called them to be. That's so good. And that's exciting because we're going to be announcing something that you're wonderfully offering to Bright City Church to help uh, those who have, um, you know, a sense that they have a prophetic gift or anybody for that ca- in that case about, you know, stewarding and developing that. Uh, so we'll we'll say more about that uh, towards the end. Mm. But yeah, I mean, as 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 Christians, as the people of God with God in us, you know, we are a prophetic people, mm. aren't we? We're, we're yeah. all, you know, um, priests unto God now or those who are born again and filled with the spirit. Um, how would you say, you know, if we think about the, dif- you know, the, the, the difference with a gift of prophecy that is, you know, something over and above and even maybe the office of a prophet, you know, uh, and, and, and us all being prophetic people as well. You know, how do we, might we differentiate some of those things? OK, is it OK to us. Well, we are. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's fine. We're all like you say, a prophetic people. We're called to display the glories of the presence of Jesus in our lives. We're called to shine brightly. We're called to reveal who he is to the world around us. And in and by revealing who he is and by living according to his ways, um, we we speak prophetically yeah. into the darkness. Mm-hmm. We carry light. We right. release yeah. the light. Absolutely. And, and out it goes. That is prophetic unction on all of us yeah. as Brilliant. the people of God. The gift of prophecy is also for everyone, everyone who can hear. Uh, Everyone can hear God speaking. The scriptures tell us that that his sheep hear his voice. If we hear him, we can say what he he is saying to other people. The Bible gives parameters, specific parameters for people who use the gift of prophecy. They're not there for foretelling in the sense or giving directional or correctional words that is something unique for the prophet Mm -hmm. but a prophesier is always to encourage to build up and to comfort those those are the the scriptural boundaries set for a a gift of prophecy in first corinthians 14 and a prophet's life is very very different but but nobody should be outside of prophetic culture if you're a christian we want to create environments yeah. where everyone can prophesy and speak the word of the Lord in grace and love yeah. to each other. And and that creates an environment, especially within our faith communities, where there's, you know, this just electricity of the presence of the Lord. And everyone is mm. also part of the, yeah. the mix. You know, nobody's sitting on the outside mm-hmm. unless they choose to sit on the outside. Nobody can say, I don't have anything to bring. We do have something to bring. We just need to learn to listen to what God is saying. And, of course, there's many, many ways that he speaks. We just have to get used to it. But then uh, the prophet Mm. is something quite different. And that is the category that I fall into. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> and a lot of brilliant. A lot of people they think that to be a prophet is just this joy ride, <laughs> and you do get to the joy eventually yeah, when okay. you get over yourself. But it's quite the journey to get there, and nobody in their right mind, I don't think, would would want to be a prophet if yeah. they knew actually the cost of getting there and the cost yeah. of continually being misunderstood, yeah. continually having to work on your issues in order to carry the necessary purity, because it's more about what you carry. Yeah. It's more about who you are and what you carry than even the words you speak when you're a prophet. It's not all about giving out words. And that is the general okay. uh, thought that people still have mm. in many spiritual contexts that a prophet is there to speak out the word of the Lord. And we do do that on occasion. But it's a very small part 
of the job of a prophet, and especially a small part of, of someone who holds the office of a prophet, which is someone who is a recognized prophet and set in place by the leaders of the church, recognized and in, in my case, even recognized in the nation. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're blessed. <laughs> to, to be, you know, to, to function in my role as, as a prophet to the nations, but in my nation. There's yeah. a special joy for me in doing things in my church and then in my nation. Mm. It's, it's, I think, part of the Father, that we all take responsibility Amen. for the places he has put us. Yeah. But the job of the prophet is so much more than just releasing the word of the Lord. Right. If you're in the office of a prophet, mm. first of all, your job is to train everyone else mm -hmm. for the work of ministry. Yes. So my yes. job is to, to come into the church and, yeah, give the occasional word mm. and speak direct and function well with the leadership. But my job is to train everyone else in the community to use the gift of prophecy. And then you don't need to say, oh, here comes the prophet. I wonder what she'll say. Although you can do that on a rare occasion. But yeah. <laughs> we're trying to get everybody into their place. Yeah. But the prophet does other things that prophesiers cannot do. Okay. So many of us are forerunners. Mm. So we go before um, things and we make way for greater things to come. We've been singing that song about being a way maker. Well, a prophet will very often carry an, a breaker anointing or a pioneer anointing, and we will be sent into places to begin to plow the ground yes, along yes. with the apostles yes. and then to begin to, once the ground is ready, to lay foundations. And, and spiritually, that is very, very difficult work, but mm -hmm. we're built for it. Amen. And so when we get to do it, there's an excitement, there's an adrenaline almost that's released because we're doing what we were created for awesome. and you know that when it happens yeah uh, we're responsible for recognizing spiritual atmospheres yeah. um and we know how to shift those things Amen. god gives us his perspective and his revelation and we know how to speak into heavy atmospheres yeah. and begin to shift them we can't always do it by ourselves very often we, it, we need to be connected with other prophets who carry similar anointing and together we'll go forward, especially in national things. Together we yeah. work and we shift uh, things like that. Fantastic. Yeah. Our call is to call people into holy living. Yeah. And very often this has not been happening. We've been telling half the story of prophets because uh, I'm sorry to say we've wanted acceptance and, and, and we've sort of stepped back from our call of speaking the truth, yeah. not our truth. We've weakened it and we've, we've just given the second half of the story. And the Lord is saying, come on, you guys, Amen. this is part of the call of a prophet to call people into a righteous standard yeah. Yeah. and to set the standard. Wow. God yeah. Set yeah. The standard. That's amazing. That, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. I, I know it's just a, a smidgen, really. Of um, And the, the exciting thing is that, uh, as I say, we'll be announcing um, a course that you're going to head up for us. And uh, that's going to be wonderful where, you know, we can learn so much more of the detail. If you... Um, if you're a person in the church and you you sense that you have you know a prophetic gifting inside you something a bit more than you know what do you think a person might do about it how should they you know what's the first thing they oh i know i've got this gift and i want to use it what what would they be their first thing to do would you say now are you talking about functioning in a church or looking for training i i, I suppose i'm thinking about within the church yeah functioning within the church with with the gift they Say you standing there in the church and you feel you have a word. Um, it's always wise to go to someone first and check that word out, not just to burst out from where you're standing in, you know, because very often the reason that you do that is because you've not learned to hold back. And there's something inside of you that wants to be seen and heard. And so Getting a mentor then, when you have that kind of activity going on, helps you to learn how to handle that kind of thing. It, it helps you to become healthy. Yeah. Because what God wants is 
if we're going to use the gift of prophecy, he wants us to do it from a position of health. And all of us have issues that need to be worked on constantly. Yeah. So the, the thing that would be really good, and especially at Bright City, would be if you if you have a word like that, go to the leaders and then the leaders need to say yes or no or not at this time or never or <laughs> yes for it whatever and then as a prophesier you need to to be humble and agree with what uh the you know the instruction or the protocol that's been set out for you but then the the we want to also provide a place where you can actually be mentored and learn how to use the gift because just because you have a gift doesn't mean you know how to use it well mm -hmm. and we're called to excellence every last one of us not yeah. perfection but excellence and the way we learn is the way we learned as children we learn from our mothers or fathers our teachers uh, our grandparents we learned those from those who have gone before us yeah. that's the way things have been done for generations and generations mm -hmm. and we want to tap into that yeah and uh, and and begin to to bring out a group of people who are skilled in this mm -hmm. who we rely on to Brilliant. speak at the right time, to hold back at the right time, so that it's the spirit of Jesus, yeah. the spirit of prophecy speaking in our midst, and not the spirit of, say, Rebecca, or the yeah. spirit of yeah. whoever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. very important, Amen. because it, when we allow something to be spoken that actually is, in quotation, flesh, then it brings a dis service to the true word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. It always does. It takes away for what is right and true and yeah. sacred and holy. Right. And yeah. so we yeah. need to learn to discern the difference. We need to learn to discern the weight mm -hmm. that a word is carrying. We need to learn to discern what is going to bring life or what is really just an encouraging kind of uh, devotional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca, this is so wonderful. I, I mean, the comments coming through, you know, people are so eating this up and loving yeah. it. And uh, I want to encourage everyone. This is just a smit a smattering yeah. of what uh, you, you and I can uh, actually glean from Rebecca as she starts um, a prophecy stewarding um, course on starting on the 4th of May. That's Monday, the 4th of May on Zoom at 7 p.m. and we'll give the details uh, following. But uh, if you're interested in, in, in signing up to that, it's really for Bright City Church uh, folks. But if you're very keen, then you can private message me and, and you can get the details. Mm -hmm. Private message the church. We'll give you the Zoom details. We want as many as possible can come. And even if you think, well, I don't know if that gift is for me, but you're interested mm -hmm. in hearing all about it, then uh, you can sign up for that. So that's fantastic. I want to give the last sort of 10, 15 minutes um, and or, or, you know, however long Rebecca wants just to <coughs> maybe bring something, mm. uh, Rebecca, uh, anything yeah. you want to share that's on your heart, mm. either for us as a church or the situation in general, what's going on. I'll just leave it over to you. I'm going to put you on the full screen and uh, <laughs> and we'll catch up in 10 minutes afterwards. Thanks ever so much. Go for it. OK, <laughs> OK. Um, I put my glasses on because I have a few notes here. Uh, but but basically, I want to talk just briefly about the wind um, and about how uh, we're in almost a tunnel of transition. And very often we learn in the tunnels of transition what we haven't learned outside. And I believe that one of the things, especially here in Kent, that we are uh, positioned as people who are are guardians of our region, guardians of our nation. And we need to learn to handle the winds really, really carefully. And outside of this shutdown, I think we've just taken them for granted. And I was I was um, praying to the Lord even this morning and, and saying, Lord, are you sure you want me just to release a quick word about the winds? And I opened my Bible and I don't know if you can see this picture fell out of my Bible. It's an old picture from goodness knows when, and I presume it's somewhere in Africa. And it, it's, um, it's an old kind of windmill. And the Lord was saying to me through, uh, you have, like society has for years 
learned how to harness the wind. And I'm bringing the body of Christ in through this tunnel. And I want them to learn to pay attention to the wind and to learn to harness the wind in ways that they've never understood before and never known what to do with them. Now, the, the Bible tells us that the winds of the, the, that the angels are like winds of the Lord. So, so we know that things move. Are you okay? I can hear you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't... <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I forget where I was. But anyway, but anyway, I, the thing that struck me about this picture is that it's old fashioned like it's it's not even a modern mill i know there are places in the world where where they still use these things and even on some of the marshes and some of the farms around where the canals are you'll see sort of little models of that kind of thing but i feel like the lord wants to reshape the church in area in, into a kind of a new mill that will learn to handle the winds of the spirit and know how to harness the strength of the winds and each of the winds um, the, the, the west and the east and the north and the south, they each have different characteristics, uh, but they're all so important. And someone has been asking me lately about the east wind. And so I wanted to highlight that wind. I went and looked on the prevailing winds and online and I looked at, at uh, the UK winds chart and, and I wanted to know why are people talking about the east wind right now? Because it's along with the north wind, one of the harsh ones. Like the north wind is cold and, and, and this one is hot, but it's a harsh, harsh wind. But it has great use. So the east wind was a scorching, scorching wind. And when it would come upon the land uh, in the days of the Bible, the plants would wither and they would just shrink when this, like with the force of the wind. And you know, all of us, even whatever the wind is, if we're outside and, and we're, our face is to the wind, we can get burnt, you know, from the force of the wind. And the east wind carries that kind of strength in particular. And it also was a wind that was very predominant when plagues came in. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and it was so strong that uh, people in those days, in the Bible days, would lock themselves in their house. And they would close all the windows and shut themselves away because they didn't know how to handle this wind. At the same time, even though we find ourselves in a similar position, even though it feels as spiritually the east wind has come against us, the east wind also carries with it um, things that are very, very good. So um, if you read further, when the children of Israel, Israel were led out of Egypt, the Bible tells us that it was the east wind that prevailed all night long, and it made a way for the children of Israel to cross over into the promised land, into the new land that God had said he would bring them to. And it was the east wind that came with great force and held back the water so that people could go through on dry land. And I thought, man, we've been singing about this for, for, for weeks. We've been singing about the way maker. And it's almost like the Lord is saying that the east wind, he has sent the east wind of the spirit to make a way forward. So even though the, we felt the effects of the plague, even though we felt the scorching effects of the wind, even though we've had to re to retreat into our houses and shut the doors and shut the windows, so to speak. God is saying that's not the whole story. That is not the whole story. And there's coming a moment when he's going to release the east wind and an even greater strength. And it's going to hold back the waters. And he's going to say, this is the way. Oh, walk in. And so as Christians, we need to become in, in tune with the winds of the spirit. We we go around and we declare things and we, we just randomly select what we're going to say and what we're going to declare and without knowing the times and the seasons. And it's so important in this time, in this day, that we know the winds, we know what they're for, we know the season, we know the moment that we're in in the season and our ear is open to the things of the Spirit so that when he releases that 
strong east wind that holds back the water, we're ready to go. We are ready to go. So we're in, we are being held, I believe, right now by the Spirit of God in our homes to be ready and saying, now the wind has shifted, things have shifted, I have been deconstructing your lives, I have been pulling apart strongholds that need to come down, I have been knocking over your false idols, I've been uh, denying you access to the things that you have found false comfort in, but I'm saying now it is time for me to redress you, to re clothe you to re put new shoes on your feet, new mindset, new structure, and get ready, get ready to go because there is a day coming where that east wind is going to make the way that you have no power to make for yourself. Oh, and part of the learn as you're being held is that only God can do this. We're living in a season where it is only God, but for God. And the great thing about it is that he chose to step into our picture right now. Whoa. Wow. Rebecca, that's that's so powerful. That's amazing. And um, I, I know some, Pastor David, in fact, put up there and saying, you know, it's so lovely to to have you in Bright City Church. Mm. And, and yes, it is, you know, and I want to, I just want to reiterate that, you know, thank you and welcome you know, mm. and we love you, yeah. and we are so <laughs> blessed and privileged. Wow, to I think have, I'm blessed and privileged. No, to, you know, to have a prophet in our in our family, yeah. and and uh, we're so excited about about the season. And and you know, as you were speaking about the winds there, I was reminded. Oh my goodness, at the beginning of the year, yeah. you came up to <laughs> us and you said in March. There is going to be a cold wind yeah. that will blow away. Yeah. You know, they, they, they'll be. It'll be seem like a, a difficult, in in a sense, uh, cold blowing, and and you know, you, of course. And then what happened in March with with all the mm. the virus, the lockdown, and everything? Who would have known? And suddenly we were sort of scattered to our homes. And then you said, but afterwards will come the life, the shoots, the life, the growth. And um, yeah. yeah, amazing. And and here we are again, hearing more of that word of the winds. And so thank you so much for that. Um, we're yeah. looking forward to um, really developing your um, your help for us mm. and, and how we work with, you know, a, a God-given prophet in our midst. And, and this is so exciting about the course that we'll be starting on the 4th. And so just to remind folks who have been commenting, I know you've many people have already been commenting on the comments. Count me in. I'm oh, yeah. in. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Can you please um, make sure that you private message the church facebook page so that um we can you know officially write you down uh rather than just on the comments but wonderful that's going to be so exciting and um let's uh maybe rebecca would you pray yeah. for us as a church you know on on what you've been sharing on on responding rightly uh in this time of the winds yeah. and and also you know growing in our prophetic uh mandate shall we say yeah thanks yeah yeah father in the name mm. of jesus thank i just you, thank you for your goodness i thank you for your absolute total love and acceptance of your people yes, and i lord. thank you for maneuvering us around and putting in us in place right now mm. exactly mm. where you want us to be yeah. even though it's hard and lord i just thank you that we are being held right now yeah. We are yes, being Lord. held by your right hand and your left hand yeah. and your heart that you are above us, beneath us, around us. And you are holding us by Hallelujah. your spirit in place and you are doing a deep, deep work. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would shift things in each one of us that mm. still need to, to be removed, to make room for you. Yeah. Father, yes, Lord. where there are false things, false ideas, wrong teachings. Yeah. All of those things where there's unforgiveness, yeah. where there's bitter roots, Father, where there's judgment, yeah. Lord, let it be uprooted. Father, let the ground be plowed as we are held in this place Thank so you, that Lord. you can release the wind that will bring change yes. and yes, that Lord. will lead us out into the new things yeah. that you have for us. 
Yes, but Lord. I thank you, just as my friend Simon was saying yesterday, we are not on pause. Hallelujah. And even while we're being held in this place, Father, you have purpose for your people. Yeah. Father, you're releasing training. Yeah. You're releasing encouragement. You're releasing hope. You're yeah. releasing yes, healing. Lord. And Father, releasing your word. And it is by your word that a thing shall be established. And Father, I thank you that you have decided that Bright City Church oh, will be a prophetic a signpost. Amen. Yeah. Father, for the town that they're in, yes. but yes, for Lord. the region. And so, Hallelujah. Father, I pray that in this season you would... It's, it's, I see a picture of a lighthouse, actually. Mm. And I see the Lord coming and, and cleaning the glass, cleaning mm. the glass. Hallelujah. There's a clearing coming in your vision. There's a yep. clearing coming in your vision so that the cast of your light will go further, yep. thank further, you, Lord. further, and into the darkness, Lord. Yep. That is where the light needs to go. Yes. Father, yes, brighten us up as we're yes, together. Lord. Father, clean the airwaves so that our reach will go further. Father, because I yes, know Lord. that's what you want for this church. Yes. Father, just raise up prophetic voices Amen. out of this place, Father, and use us to further your kingdom in the name of Jesus. And those who have a prophetic spirit on, on you right you. now, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, I just release more. I just release the four winds of the spirit that mm -hmm. in their spirit swirl and bring you even closer to God and bring you yes, into the Lord. very council yeah. of God so that you stand before him and then when you come out to the Arribu people Lord that, that they would release a pure word mm. a holy word yes, a Lord. sanctified word that changes everything yes. in the name of Jesus yes, and Lord. Father I just Hallelujah. pray for each one yeah. on this broadcast that Father each one of them would have a takeaway each yes, one yeah, of them. Yes. No one could receive from this broadcast thinking, well, that wasn't for me. Amen. Because, Lord, 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 there's something for everyone. Yes, there's manna that's right. for everyone. Yes. That's right. Life. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Everyone. Receive. Hallelujah. For we take our portion. Yeah. And we give you thanks. Thank you. Jesus name. Thank Whoa. you. Lord. Thank you. Lord. Yes. Just mm -hmm. receive that word. Mm -hmm. Those of you watching that that word is for you. Yeah. You know, you, God has set things up. So you are here hearing yeah. the living word of God coming to you. Receive that. That transformational yeah. work that God is doing is for you, is for me, is for now. How do we receive it? We agree. We, we, we just say, yeah. yes, yeah. Lord, do it in me. I receive yes. and you will will be transformed through this special time and yeah. um rebecca thank you so much again for bringing that word thank you for being in our yeah, family thank you. Uh, thank you for offering yourself to do the course as well which is so exciting that's uh, starting a week tomorrow which is the the 4th of may and um yeah so yeah people are receiving it uh, yes i receive it i receive it i receive it they're receiving that word wow and amen that's being so well received bless you yeah i just wanted to add to what you were saying you know this morning i was thinking this about you know in the joel prophecy which is about and it shall come to pass in the last day says god that i will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young man shall see visions. Your old man shall dream dreams. And we've been speaking this prophetic word for so long now. And, you know, and the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out on all flesh. And, you know, and as we were looking at, you know, you were talking about prophesying into the darkness. We can all do that, can't we? We can speak into the darkness right now and see things change and see things shift. We've all got a role to play. We've all got something to do, each and every one of us. Yeah. Great. Rebecca, yeah. people are saying thank you so much. There's so many saying thank you and goodbye. And, and we say thank you, Rachel yeah, and I. <laughs> and uh, we love you and look forward to talking again soon and having you on again soon. And we're looking forward to the fourth. The fourth. And the fourth. so many are saying, may the fourth be with you. That's the, the going crack <laughs> at the moment. So, yeah. Have a lovely Sunday afternoon. And uh, what have you got? Uh, what have you got on for Sunday lunch? Anything uh, special? Me? <laughs> yeah. Nothing. I was Nothing too yet. tired today. <laughs> yeah. Have a beautiful rest, <laughs> okay. and uh, God bless you. And wonderful preaching, Rebecca. These are the comments coming in. Thank you so much. Awesome, Rebecca. Made lots of notes. Thank you so much, Rebecca. So yeah, it's been so appreciated. We'll God play bless. out with a song. Yeah, we're going to just bye play bye. out with a song. Say goodbye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Thanks for joining us, everyone. That was an amazing time uh, with Rebecca. Wow, it's... Sadza for lunch for Fani. Sadza. Well, we've got some... What have we got? We've got chili con carne. And uh, just um, a big shout out to those that we haven't said hello to. I know that Adela's been on. And hi, Adela. Has... Yeah, bye, Adela. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Bye, Stephanie. Bye, Teresa. Teresa is receiving the transformation. Amen. This is truly the day that the Lord has made grace. Amen. We receive from you, Father. Thank you. Goodbye, all. Goodbye, Graham. Bye, Angela. Great service. Thank you. Goodbye, Sarah. Thanks so much. Bye, Ben. Thanks for the worship, Ben and Jay. I've got bread. Hallelujah. <laughs> bread and jam for uh, Rebecca for Sunday lunch. Good to see you both. Take care and stay safe. Thanks, Jeremy and Karen. Thank you, Colin and Karen. Bless you. We're going to say goodbye. Bye, family. We'll sing out the last, the, we'll sing out the chorus, shall we? You are here, moving every heart. I worship you. I worship you. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. <laughs> we make a miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Why, oh, you mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all, Jesus. You wipe away our tears. You mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all, to it all, Jesus. We make a miracle work. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Bye, everyone. Bye, Millie. Bye, bye, bye Norman. Bye, all. We're going to... Bye, bye. <laughs>